new rule. What if I only smoked weed with black people? Is that racist? Well, here's the thing. They don't have to be black as long as they act black. Is that racist? I want you guys to let me know because all of my decisions are based on what the Vortex thinks of me, don't you know? I don't think that this is a bad rule, okay? Basically, I, I know it sounds discriminatory, but as long as I don't smoke with white people, like, you know, like uptighty whiteies, that, that's what I mean. Because um, they'd really kill the buzz, you know what I'm saying? I think that in order to work in Steak and Shake, you either have to be black or act black because everybody that works here tells it like it is. If we got something to say, we say it straight to your face. I also think that in order to work at Steak and Shake, you have to think like a libertarian. Hold on one second. Putting on my seatbelt, just in case. What does it mean to think like a libertarian, Amy? Taking responsibility for oneself. Owning whenever you make a mistake. Not trying to start shit with people for no fucking reason. Only defending yourself when it's absolutely necessary. Not getting offended by anything and everything, all because you can. Um, did I mention responsibility? Yes, you did. Yay! Not trusting anybody. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Most people don't know about the philosophy. And I think that this is because it's not talked about a lot, but it's very like in the middle. And since being in the middle is sort of unheard of, like people think you either, either have to be this extreme or that extreme. That's why most people don't know about it. But I think that the, the crux of it is like just not trusting anybody, but especially the government, especially authority figures, especially people that act like they're going to help you. We know that you're full of shit. We don't have to wait for you to prove it. They're always popping people like right over there. Like every single weekend, uh, the cops show up at Steak and Shake. They used to do this because we, we'd call them because something would happen at the store and they'd be like right up the road. They'd just be waiting, you know, ready for something to do. Uh, but they've probably realized that like a lot of drug addicts either work at Steak and Shake or eat at Steak and Shake, go figure. A lot of drunk people. I mean, like, if they just waited around long enough, a drunk driver would surely come waltzing in the parking lot. Like, they get pulled over in the drive-thru, they get pulled over, and they haven't even got around the building yet. I mean, you'll see them get pulled over, like, immediately when they enter the parking lot. It's pretty funny. It's also annoying. It's just annoying seeing those blue lights. But the thing is, like, if you're being stupid, like, you're gonna get caught. Period. Point blank. Just don't be stupid about it, and you won't have anything to worry about. But so many people are cocky. I try not to be cocky. Even though I probably seem like I'm cocky in other regards, I try not to be cocky about drug use. <laughs> the 
it's a good roll. It is! It's a very good roll. I mean, I don't think that weed should be illegal. I don't think any drug should be illegal. I think you dig your own goddamn grave. You know? If you want to shoot up heroin or snort cocaine or make a bunch of meth and blow yourself up, you know, that's your own, that's your own volition, you know? Do whatever the fuck you want. And it sucks because, like, you know, kids get involved and, you know, if you're a son or a daughter, which everybody is, somebody's son or daughter, or a unicorn or whatever the fuck. <laughs> well, like, this is a good way to hold it. You guys see me better? This is interesting. It's always interesting when I shoot videos. Um, what was I talking about? Fuck! I hate being ADD. But I don't want medication to deal with it. Fuck that. It's way more fun to just be ADD. Don't you think? It's interesting. It's way more interesting to just have, like, a scatterbrain. You know, than, you know, be a zombie. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um... God, I totally forgot what I was talking about. You were talking about... See, this is always fun, too, to, like, try to trace it back and, like, figure out what we were trying to talk about before we completely forgot. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. You're not sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> God, I hate trying to figure it out. It's so annoying. Um, were you talking about the light? No, I think you were talking about police. Of course I was talking about police. Oh, so many police. You know, it annoys me, like, when I watch these videos. And, like, I can tell, like, what I want to talk about, but it's, like, I'm interacting with my own videos. I'm like, Amy, you fucking piece of shit. Why can't you get to the motherfucking point? Too many commas. <laughs> Way too many commas. But, uh... Yeah, so it's, like little after two o'clock in the morning like right before we were about to close we got like a rush of people there were like 25 people that came in and left a really shitty tip that always pisses me off this is why I'm not a server because I would just be so mad all the time and uh, this is why people that work in the restaurant industry have a really shitty attitude about humanity it's because we know how shitty human beings are all the time. Um, and that's not everybody though. But you tend to like generalize and you tend to like just grow really cynical and bitter about everybody. And so you just naturally assume that people are fucking shitheads. And I always feel bad when they're not shitheads. But when you have to deal with so many fucking assholes on a regular basis, it, it's really hard to not just assume that everybody's the same. But, uh, it's always really cool when, when, you know, they surprise you, though. So, my rule is just to assume that everybody's a shithead. So then you're pleasantly surprised when they're not a shithead. And you might think that that's really dark and depressing. And that's a really shitty way to look at life. But I think it's pretty shitty to be a socialist, so I still win. Um, back to libertarianism. <laughs> I think that libertarianism is more of a philosophy than it is like a political party. I mean, obviously, it's not much of a political party. Um, drugs! You were talking about drugs! Yes, I was! <laughs> of course I was. I was talking about cops, and then I was talking about drugs, the libertarians. Yes, this makes sense. This makes so much sense. Okay, so I think that all drugs should be legalized. 
mainly because smartphones are legal and social networking is legal and these things are far more destructive than heroin in fact I really wish that you could overdose on Twitter because that would take so many people out you know Chelsea Handler would be dead um, all the twat bots would be dead uh, all the celebrities would be dead they should tax Twitter that's what they should do oh my god we are a genius <laughs> We are a genius. I love that. Don't you? It's beautiful. I'm glad that I pray before I shoot these videos. Like, it just makes the video better. Because God's with us right now. Can't you feel him? Can't you feel his wonderful presence? Well, uh... <laughs> yes, legalize all drugs. Well, don't, don't legalize. Decriminalize all drugs. That would make the most sense. Because then, you take the taxpayer out of it. <laughs> would you really know? Like, that's the thing, that, that's what, that's what the lie is in regards to weed. Like, they're gonna legalize weed, and then they're just gonna make it so like, people get pulled over all the time, and then they get a bunch of DWIs, you know, driving, uh, what is it, driving while intoxicated, or driving, driving under, uh, not driving under the influence, but, um, I'm driving while intoxicated, I'm pretty sure that's it. We should look this up when we get home. Anyway, um, it's like, we already have all these roadblocks, especially like during the holidays. You know, this happens a lot during the holidays, uh, you know, like New Year's and, um, 4th of July, like there were cops everywhere. Because they expect people to be drunk and, and driving around, which is, which is doable. You know, it's, it's not like that's an unreasonable expectation. But roadblocks, really? Sobriety checks? I just think that, I just think they're overstepping their boundaries, you know? It's not that I, I don't think that, that there is some use for like a group of people that are, you know, paid to keep people in line. Like, that's their job, is like to make sure that people follow the laws and shit. But if the laws are stupid, I mean, I've just, I've just never been one to follow a rule if I don't agree with it, you know? I'll just go out of my way to not get caught for breaking the rule. And that's what smart people do, you know, libertarians. <laughs> They're not going to whine about the rules and try to change the rules. They'll just like figure out a really clever ass way to like sneak around the system, you know? That's a much smarter thing to do than whine about the way the things are, you know? I just, I don't get that. I don't get whiners. I don't get the whiners mentality. It's just silly you know because it's not going to change it it's not going to change anything like in it even if you know with marijuana being legalized it's like they found so many pesticides on all of this legal weed like i believe it was 83 percent of the weed found in california had pesticides on it so like how the fuck can you trust this shit I think that the government needs to leave that plant alone and just let people do what they want to do with it. Now, if they decriminalize it, that would be the best of both worlds because um, you know, like we we wouldn't be wasting as much money. I guess they're always going to find a way uh, to screw people over. You know, they're always going to do that. But I I just think. It's stupid that it's illegal, like completely illegal. Like that's just dumb. Um, but but I I don't think it's just weed. I mean, like a lot of people say that about about uh, mainly marijuana. But I would say everything, man. You got all these other things that are legal that are so destructive. Like just let people take themselves out with something. You know, um, survival of the fittest. And you can say that's cult. But here's the thing, like. 
just because something's illegal, that doesn't mean that people aren't gonna do it. I mean, that's silly. So, it, it just seems rather pointless to keep something illegal that, that everybody's gonna still manage to do anyway. Like, if you, if you want heroin, you'll find heroin. And nothing's gonna stop you, man. So all these people, they, they want to, like, ban semi-automatics. <laughs> are you retarded? People on gun control are, like, the stupidest fucking people ever. Like, I just, I don't get it. Don't get it. Oh, this, I, authority. People, it's, it's a control thing. It's a control thing. People want to control other people, and they think that, oh, if the, if the, there are laws... If there are laws on the books that say you can't do this, that means that that they won't do this. <laughs> I think you've really underestimated human nature, honey. You've really underestimated the capacity the human beings have to screw up their lives and screw up other people's lives and be selfish and self-centered. I mean, if, if you want a gun, you're going to get a gun. And if you can't get a gun, you'll find some way to hurt people the way that you want to, and it's probably going to be even more ruthless, you know? But, uh, the whole gun control thing really makes me nervous. And I don't even have a gun. It's just, it, this shit just pisses me off. Because it's just people trying to meddle in other people's lives, pretending that they give a fuck about a bunch of white kids in, in suburbia. Now, I'm not saying it's not a tragedy when kids get shot. But... <laughs> but... Is it, is it really... I mean, here's the thing. These kids, they say, oh, they're, they said they had such a bright future ahead of them. A bright future, really. A bright future of going to college and being another trigger-happy piece of shit that's going to be completely manipulated and exploited by their Marxist professor and they're going to just go to protest rally after protest rally and pretend that they give a fuck about all these issues that they don't know about um, that's, that's what would have happened to them if they hadn't gotten shot in high school uh, so uh, it's, another, it's another 10 to 20 years of, of staring into their cell phone and being in debt and uh, paying a shrink an outrageous amount of money to give them pills for a disease that they don't actually have and uh, pretending that they're happy and satisfied in relationships when they just feel dead and empty inside. Yes, such a tragedy, such a tragedy that your son got shot. I mean, I know that that's cynical, but I just... I think that, um, I'm gonna turn this off. No, no, keep it on, keep it on. Oh, well, fuck. There are not enough street lights, Amy. I mean, it seems like a tragedy, like when people die, right? But, but is it, is it actually a tragedy if they were never alive to begin with? It's just a tragedy because they're young, right? Louis C.K. made this point and he got in so much trouble for it. But it's like all these kids that are like acting like they're gonna change the world. They're gonna change the world because they're liberals. All liberals have this stupid ass attitude. You're not gonna change anything. I mean, you might create a hashtag, congratulations. Anybody and everybody can do that shit. It's not that hard. Pound sign. That's what it used to be. <laughs> now I know I sound really cold. Like how dare I, I don't have kids and, you know, if I had a kid, I wouldn't give him a bottle of pills. I wouldn't give him a game controller. I wouldn't let him just like sit in front of the fucking TV and eat a bunch of sugar and uh, handy snacks or whatever the fuck. Handy snacks. Oh my God. They still have handy snacks. Maybe, maybe not. 
You guys remember that shit? It was like those little, it was like a little piece of wood. <laughs> That's what it looked like. It was like a little cracker you dip in like some pasteurized cheese that was like room temperature. <laughs> Do y'all remember Dunkaroos? Holy shit, those were really good. I would eat those today. Even if I know they're like complete crap, just full of like MSG and GMOs and all kinds of other acronyms that are horrible for you. But I would still eat them because they were so motherfucking addictive. Anyway. It's just like people, they act like dying is like such a tragedy, but it's like, I think Henry David Thoreau said this about how like people aren't really alive anyway. So it's like, do they really die if they weren't really living? <laughs> oh, he was a stone cold cynic for sure. God, I love some Thoreau. He was so ahead of his time. He knew that there was like no point in all this like modernism and like he didn't understand like what, what people were so excited about. But I find his cynicism absolutely hilarious. Because, like, whenever you, like, you, you listen to somebody that's just so cynical about the way that the world really is, it's like there's so much truth to everything that they're saying, but, like, all these optimists are just so blatantly just, like, but, but, but it could be such a good thing. You know, like, why do you have to, why do you have to look at, look at the negative side of everything? Why do you have to always be so down? It's like, it's not that I don't enjoy life. That's the thing. Sorry, I'm not I'm not gonna turn this light on because I don't know if there are cops hanging around and I don't want them to be like, what the fuck is that bitch doing? Um, I don't want them to think I'm holding a cell phone. Because I'm sure that's what they would assume if they see some like bright light, you know. If God seems far away, guess who moved? Me? <laughs> that's a good guess. That's an old ass church billboard. I'm, I'm sick of this fucking laziness. Baptist. <laughs> no, I've seen that church billboard many times. Not just on that, but, uh, not just on that one, but like a lot of places, so. <laughs> I'm fucking lazy, these like religious turds. No, but like I've said, like I really like church billboards if they're actually clever and interesting. But, um, it's just like all these kids that are responsible for these mass shootings have been on like all these psychotropic drugs that they claim are the answer to everything. And they're not going to talk about that because if they talk about that, like that changes the entire conversation that redirects it from like guns being the problem to psychiatric drugs being the problem, which is really obvious, but they don't want to take away anybody's prescription. They want to take away our right to defend ourselves from a corrupt government. Like, that's what they want. They want this country to turn socialist. And I'm really getting sick of people acting like that's not, like, <laughs> socialism is a, a precursor to communism, okay? Marx and Engels did not write the Socialist Manifesto. They wrote the Communist Manifesto. So, people that claim to be Marxists, and then they say, no, 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 we don't, we don't want to abolish private property. That's not what we want. We want democratic socialism. They don't understand like what that entails. Now I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they're just like stupidly idealistic. And for whatever reason, they've set their sights on this idea of like the collective being responsible for everybody, you know? I don't understand this mindset, but um, I think a lot of people have it because like they really want to believe in this like kumbaya kind of bullshit philosophy 
of like everybody getting along, but like that's literally impossible, y'all. That's literally impossible. Like there's no way that you can make everybody like each other and take care of each other. Like just give up that dream, please give up that dream. And you're definitely not gonna make people get along just by like holding a gun to their head, which is essentially what they're suggesting. Sorry, it's too loud. Um, I'm just a person of principle. I don't think that you should force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do naturally on their own. Like, it's different, you know, if you're a parent and you're forcing your kid to do chores. That will give them, like, a sense of, of discipline. They might hate you, but later on they'll probably thank you. Because, like, parents that just give their kids everything and they don't make them work for, for what they want. Like, we, we see the result of that on, on these college campuses, you know? So, good job. I just think it's, like, lazy parenting. It's lazy to, like, give your kids pills rather than just talk to them, you know, and try to, try to understand why they can't focus. I try to understand, like, why they're sad and they cry all the time, you know? Maybe something happened to them and they don't want to tell you about it. It's just this country is, like, way too quick to just, like, throw a pill at a problem or throw a dollar bill at a problem. It's like, yeah, and you wonder why kids are shooting each other. You wonder why people can't communicate anymore. It's because of this stupid-ass mentality, and it's so lazy and so that's why I don't really feel sorry for all the bad things that are happening. Like, I don't, I don't feel sorry for, for parents that, like, I know, that sounds cold. I, I hate being so self-aware. It's like I can't make up my mind on anything because, like, I'm too busy feeling bad about my negative emotions. But, like, honestly, though, it's just hard for me to have like sympathy for people that go out of their way to avoid what's really going on and then they get smacked upside the head with reality and then they want to whine about it. And I'm like, well, this is what you get. This is what you get for being so irresponsible and so lazy and constantly trying to put this on somebody else and not actually dealing with it. Now, does it suck for, for parents that, like, lose their kids in a shooting? Yeah, yeah, it sucks. But don't blame the gun. Don't blame the responsible gun owner. Um, and I would say if you want to blame anybody, you can blame society. But that's, that's way too, um, what's the word? Versatile? Not versatile, but... I mean, that would take way too long to, like, blame all these different people in society, blame all the different facets of our culture that are so fucked up, blame every single person that works in big pharma and these labs making these, these drugs that um, cause these suicidal ideations, these violent um, hallucinations, all this shit. It's like, that would take way too long. So it's much easier to just blame guns, you know? It's so much easier to just blame the NRA than it is to like do a little bit of research and go, oh my God, all of these shooters have been on these drugs. Because that takes work, that takes discipline, that takes effort. And guess what, you guys? Lots of guns are fired every day. That doesn't mean that they're fired at other people. And black people shoot other black people all the time. They never talk about that shit. They only talk about it when white kids get shot. Like, the only time that they talk about it when black kids get shot is whenever, like, it's done by a police officer. And even then, do they get acquitted? Does anything actually happen to them? I mean, it's, it's all for the media. It's all for, it, it's all for the agenda. Take everybody's guns. Good luck with that. See how well prohibition worked?
hats off to my fellow freaks and weirdos and free thinkers that have the audacity to say, fuck you, society. Fuck you, political bullshit. Fuck you, labels. Fuck you. Banks. <laughs> Banks and advertisers and bureaucrats. And always a big extra special fuck you to the government. You guys might be the long G, but you're the little G because the shorter G, that's God. He's the better G. Goodbye. <laughs>